Hi there, my name is Ken, and in this talk, I want to share with you our recent work on the scalar mechanism for differentially private federated learning. This is joint work with my wonderful colleagues, Naman and Peter at Google. Let me start off by providing some background. As we all know, federated learning is a machine learning paradigm that aims to learn from decentralized data. There are lots of good things about federated learning that comes from its data minimization principles, such as minimized data exposure, ephemeral collection, and only in aggregate release. These techniques provide good privacy for users' data. But what if you want quantifiable privacy? We can apply a technique called differential privacy for this purpose. Applying DP to federated learning involves two steps in practice. First, bound the user contributions, and second, add some noise on top of the user contributions. Specifically, in what we call as the central DP model, you will have each client clip their updates before sending to the server, and then you would add privacy preserving noise on the server to prevent the model from overfitting to any particular user's contribution. This ensures that the trained model and the model iterates do not contain too much information about any particular client. However, central DP requires that the, the, the clients to trust the server in adding the noise, which may not always be desirable. So instead, we can apply both clipping and noising locally. Uh, but unfortunately, as shown in the DP literature, this generally leads to poor performance. A natural, a natural question to ask then is, can we somehow combine the best of both worlds? The answer is yes. Uh, we can use a version of differential privacy called distributed differential privacy, which offers privacy guarantees and trust models similar to local DP, while retaining high quality model performance of central DP. The word distributed here can be interpreted as somehow distributing the trust away from the central server. For our distributed DP model, we rely on secure aggregation, which is a cryptographic protocol to some high dimensional vectors in a way that ensures that the server learns just the sum and no individual data whatsoever. SACAC is a mature technology that's currently running in production at scale. And for the purpose of this video, we'll just treat it as a black box that securely computes integer modular sum for us. Details for SACAC can be found at the references below. Under SACAC, we can then develop a distributed DP model as follows. Each client continues to clip norm and add noise locally, as in the local DP model. With secure aggregation, each client now adds a very small amount of noise, specifically one nth of the intended central noise variance, and the server would then only see the sum of all the noisy updates, which gives comparable privacy epsilon as if we were running the central DP model. Uh, this works intuitively because the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances of the individual noise shares. So now that we've talked about the DP model that we're aiming for, uh, let's look at some existing DP mechanisms. The Gaussian mechanism is a default mechanism that is used widely with extensive existing results. However, the problem is that digital computers can't store exact Gaussian samples, and this could potentially lead to privacy failures. Moreover, it does not go well with SACAC because SACAC only takes integers or discrete values. Another existing mechanism is the binomial mechanism, which is discrete and works with SACAC. However, it has finite support, which means it won't satisfy Rennie or zero concentrated DP, which means we can't get tight compositions when we repeat the mechanism for many times, as is the case with federated learning. Recent work also introduces the discrete Gaussian mechanism, which in a central case provides basically the same privacy as the continuous Gaussian. While this is really good, sampling from a discrete Gaussian is not very easy at this stage because efficient sampling implementations are not yet widely available in packages like NumPy and TensorFlow. Moreover, discrete Gaussians are not close under summation. So in settings such as federated analytics, where we have a huge number of clients, the distributed version of discrete Gaussian could underperform due to, a sm uh, due to small local noise variances. In this work, we introduced the multidimensional scalar mechanism, which involves adding noise from the scalar distribution. The scalar distribution is a distribution for the difference of two independent Poisson random variables, and it is symmetric when the Poisson random variables have the same variance. Uh, scalar has several nice properties. First, it is closed under summation because Poisson is closed under summation. Uh, this means we can easily switch between central and distributed DP applications that we've seen earlier. Second, it is easy to sample because you just need to draw Poisson samples. Uh, also, Scalum gets closer to Gaussian, uh, to the Gaussian distribution with larger variance, which is illustrated below. 
the scalar mechanism was previously introduced for the scalar case. And unfortunately, RDP and zero CDP analysis were not available. So you would get poor performance if we just try to directly generalize the, sca generalize the scalar analysis to the vector case with compositions. In this work, we provide a type RDP analysis that performs as good as the continuous Gaussian under practical conditions. Our analysis really allows Scalum to be used for complex problems such as federated learning for the first time, and as we show uh, with our extensive empirical analysis. Now let's briefly go over our main result. This is the main RDP guarantee of the Scalum mechanism. In particular, the first term is exactly the RDP term for the continuous and the discrete Gaussian mechanism. Scalum would introduce a second term, so we'll have a slightly worse privacy, but notice that this term actually quickly goes to zero if the noise has a high variance. Now a high variance can either come from a strong privacy requirement, or we can simply scale both the input and the noise variance to directly dampen the second term. This is nice because in practice, when you combine scalar mechanism uh, with quantization techniques, a reasonable scaling factor during quantization would make the second term practically zero. Uh, in the interest of time, I will briefly highlight the RDP analysis and please check out the full version of, uh, for, for more details. So when we perform RDP analysis, we will look at two shifted scalar PMFs and try to bound the ratio. For Gaussian, this quantity, uh, the, analysis, the analogous quantity has a closed form expression, but unfortunately we don't quite have that uh, uh, for scalar because we're dealing with Bessel functions. So we need to look at existing bounds on the ratios of Bessel functions. The previous analysis for the scalar mechanism uses, uses an older bound that leads to a bad dependency on L1 sensitivity. And in our work, we leverage a tighter bound from 2016 that allows us to shave off that dependency and hence lead to a rapid decay of the second term of our RDP guarantees. Um, to see this in action, let's, let's compare uh, scalar against several mechanisms in a distributed scalar case. Here we plot the privacy epsilon against the central noise multiplier. On the left, we have relatively small noise. X axis is a central noise multiplier, which is the ratio between the standard deviation and the sensitivity. And we can see that Scalum approaches Gaussian under the effect of scaling and degrades more gracefully than the distributed discrete Gaussian when the local noise is small. Uh, notice here that we have a target central noise standard deviation, but we are adding noise locally on the n equals 100 clients. So you have to split the noise into the local shares, and this is what is contributing to the DDG divergence. On the right, when we have very high privacy, then we can see that the Scalum mechanism performs as good as the, as, as good as the Gaussian, and also outperforms the existing direct analysis for scalars, which is the green line. When we consider the distributed vector case, along with compositions, uh, we also see similar results. On the left, we have clients uh, starting with real vectors, and then the entries are rounded to integers before adding noise. So similarly, Scala matches the Gaussians under the effect of scaling, and when the scaling is insufficient, it behaves slightly better than the distributed discrete Gaussian. On the right, we have a practical FL setting, where we have a model of a million parameters in T equals 1500 rounds, and we see that even though DDG is asymptotically closer to Gaussian, Scalum practically gives the same performance. We empirically validated the Scalum mechanism under the distributed DP model on federated learning by training a language model on the SAC overflow dataset. On the left, we show the test accuracy across different levels of privacy and communication budgets. And on the right, we show the validation accuracy over training for a particular setting. The main result is that the scalar mechanism can indeed match the central Gaussian and the distributed discrete Gaussian mechanisms across different settings. Um, however, due to time limit, please check out the full version of our paper for more results on federated learning as well as on distributed mean estimation. Um, this slide summarizes the main takeaways from our paper and feel free to just pause the video and go over this summary. Uh, please also check out the code and the full version of this paper. Thank you for your attention.